practice 15 uh, today, and you know, obviously we got half the, halfway through the practice, and because of lightning, we were able to go indoors to the new uh, Coalfield House Performance Center. And you know, as I've said before, I uh, haven't spent you know a lot of years here where this would have happened, and we would be waiting in the locker room for some time for the lightning to pass. So it's a, such a uh, privilege to be able to have such a beautiful facility like that. And, I know our team, and, uh, they're excited that we are able to continue to get the work in that we need to get in. Um, you know, uh, something off the off of football, but uh, for you guys, we're going to take the team. And I feel like they've worked pretty hard here the last few days, and uh, we're going to load up and we're going to head up to the Baltimore Ravens game versus the Green Bay Packers tonight. So that's why they were all excited rushing out of here and uh, you know, get a chance to see Darnell Savage, former Turf play but also root for our hometown team, the Ravens. And so I know the kids are excited about that. Helps break up the monotony of training camp. Uh, it's kind of in that point where it starts grinding on you and we need to have that kind of grind, but also I feel uh, we need to reward our guys for a, a job well done thus far of doing things uh, the way we want them done. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Can we go? Sure. <laughs> Boxy. Yeah. Coach, um, in the spring you moved Fontaine from defense to offense. Last week, Gaddy the same. Who do you see rising up in the uh, D line two deep that's allowed you to have that flexibility? Hey guys? Well, we've got numbers there, a little more numbers than, than we had on the offensive line. And, I mean, obviously, Kieran Howard, Olu has done a, uh, both those guys have done a great job. Uh, Lautez Rogers has, has continued a, a good job, and you know the other Gaddy, uh, Brandon Gaddy, has done a good job. Uh, uh, giving us meaningful reps in there. And then, you know, with the JUCO guy, we signed, signed Samo. Um, so we've got, uh, had a little more depth on the defensive line position. Uh, we'll play a three down front as opposed to a four down front. So I think the addition of the Shaq Smith and the Keandre Jones has helped us because we're playing a three, four front more than we are a true four down. And, you know, when we get into some nickel situations, you'll see both some of those guys Become pass rushers or defensive ends for us, but standing up. So uh, we have a little more flexibility on that side of the ball, but we also needed to create some depth uh, on the offensive line, which is what, what uh, predicated the moves. With uh, Johnny Jordan played center a few games last year because of injuries, but what have you seen from him as he's kind of taking on that ball more? Yeah, I think the, I think the big thing is his leadership. You know, Johnny's a guy that's played a lot of football around here in a short period of time. He's got a lot of experience. Um, He's a guy we rely on to get everything set, the calls up front, getting all five guys on the same page with the offensive line. And you know, I've been really pleased with his leadership and, and, and his knowledge of what we need. You know, one of the things they say in football is you need to be really strong up the middle. And so that's your interior D lineman, your nose guard, your center, your Mike linebacker, your free safety uh, are the strengths of where you need to be strong. And having a guy like Johnny and his experience has helped us with the transition as we've moved into our new offensive system. It's a little more big picture here, but um, with, with so many new faces in the program, it's it's been really interesting to see just how much familiarity there is. It's, it's guys like Shaq Smith coming in and Corey Robinson's here, and, and they've known each other, and it's so many guys who knew each other from high school, and obviously you know so many of the guys. Um, what's that been like, having all these new faces, but also kind of old faces at the same time? Well, I think the biggest thing was just kind of what you said. Um, you know, typically when you come in as a new head coach or a new coaching staff, uh, you spend a lot of your time trying to get to know kids. And, you know, I know what I've seen coming in uh, multiple times as a new staff, you typically see a little more attrition uh, because people don't fit the culture or they're not a great fit for what the new staff wants and what they do. I, I think we've been helped by the fact that I, I do have some knowledge. You know, most of the juniors and seniors on our team are guys that I played a role in recruiting here to Maryland. A lot of the sophomores like Anthony McFarland, I started the process on them and recruited them at other places. And so um, walking into the door and having those built-in relationships, not just with the kids, but with their families, there's a, a kind of a trust factor that's there that I think have, has allowed us to maybe expedite the growth of the relationship, at least for me, but also bringing in staff members. And I really said this when I hired the staff, I really took my time to make sure I brought in the right kind of staff members that would be what I was to guys like Ron Zook and Nick Saban and the head coaches I worked for. Um, you know, 
guys that were able to have those meaningful relationships like I had as an assistant because as a head coach, it's hard to touch all 105 guys. And so I needed my staff to be a staff of guys that would serve as mentors to develop the type of relationships we need to have, you know, especially because of what we've gone through as a program. Is Lolo back closer? I think he's getting closer. I mean, I know he's done some things on the side, and you know, this is a you know hamstrings with a, a fast guy like him. They're they're a nuisance, but he's doing what we're asking. He's trying to get back. Um, I think he is closer. Um, he, he's done a little bit more here the last couple of days. Uh, Coach, I know that up to this point you've been saying that nobody's really stuck out in the quarterback situation. Is that still is it still the case? No, I mean, I, I think we've seen since the scrimmage, we've had some guys. You know, this is the first I've been asked about it since uh, the scrimmage, and you know, I, I thought both uh, Piggy and, and, and Josh both did a really good job on Saturday, uh, minus their third down stuff. You know, which you can't minus because that's part of the game. Um, but we did put them in some uh, third down situations. I think any of them played well in, but uh, you know, we created some explosive plays. I think we had like 14 or 15 explosive plays on offense. And I think both those guys were responsible for most of them in the passing game. Obviously, I think Piggy has done some things with his feet in the run game that gives us a chance. But I've been pleased with how he's responded to the competition in the room. And, you know, Josh is a guy that makes really good decisions, throws an easy ball to catch. Uh, you know, I think both those guys are, uh, have maybe kind of worked themselves into where you, they, they created a little bit of separation. Um, I will say this, Lance LeJean had a really good scrimmage on Saturday, and he continues to impress us, so uh, him being in the mix. And, you know, today I was happy to see, you know, Tyler kind of, he's been the one that I was probably, has been in a funk uh, based off of his play, and today he got an opportunity to go back with the ones again, and he made some throws, so I was happy to see him respond the way he needs to respond. But I would say coming out of the uh, Saturday scrimmage that, you know, Piggy, Josh, and Lance all did some really good things. Mike, when you, when you have a new staff and a new system, <clears throat> is special teams one of the harder things to completely gauge and, and find the opportunity to assess during during camp and, and during a, an off season? Well, it's hard to assess from the standpoint of, um, you know, we don't tackle to the ground with special teams, but uh, to evaluate them and how they operate the techniques and fundamentals within the position, we're able to see them. We hit those things uh, at least three times uh, with each practice. We have a walkthrough. We have two different segments within practice. You know, the thing that I found very uh, interesting is walking in here is that we've got some really good, big, long bodies that can run, which typically on special teams you need those receivers, DBs, linebacker bodies that are big, thick guys that can run and be physical. And so. Um, I've been pleased with, you know, the way it's been implemented. You know, Coach Papuchas does a really good job of how he teaches it and installs the different uh, schemes. You know, obviously the two big ones for us are punt and, and, and also kickoff cover, which are like, as I told our team, if you're on the punt and kickoff cover unit, you're part of an elite group because we put our best players on there. And, you know, I've come from a place where, you know, you have a Heisman Trophy winner as the starting right guard on the punt team, and you're going to put your best players that give you, uh, that you can count on and are trustworthy, reliable, uh, big time players, so you'll, so you'll find them on both those teams. And it's a, you know, it's almost like a reward to be on those two. And so I've been pleased with how everything's gone special teams so far. Have you seen Petrino get stronger with his <clears throat> distance or height or whatnot in the kick game? Well, I mean, his field goal stuff has, uh, has been really consistent. I mean, he's hitting the ball well. And, you know, he banged one in the day in a two minute situation. Uh, to win the game in two minutes for us today, which was good to see. This is really the first time we put him in a pressure situation, and he responded uh, the way you would hope he would. Um, as far as his, the kickoffs and those things, we, we're still kind of gauging and charting those things. You mentioned before about how play callers add their personality to things. So how, how would you describe what Scotty brings and adds to, to what we know about your offensive line? Well, I, I think, number one, his ability to pick up what we've done on offense and who we are on offense. Um, you know, he's been around the game. He's, been, he's coached the NFL. Uh, he's been a head coach. He's been a coordinator. He's been a play caller. So I've been pleased with it. But I think the big thing with play calling is the anticipation of being able to get the next call. You know, one of the things I learned early from Ralph Friedgen as a play caller is when you call that first play, 
you need to be anticipating. If it's first and ten, you need to have a second and long call and a second and medium call ready to go. And that way you're not reacting. And so I think what I've seen out of Scotty, he shows the acumen to be able to prepare or play for the next play and anticipate the next call. I like the tempo. Um, I, I've been pleased with him and his personality. I mean, when I mean personality, some coaches, some guys are aggressive play callers. Some guys kind of, you know, like to run. Some people like to pass. Now, fortunately, maybe unfortunately for Scotty, I'm in the meeting room offensively to where I kind of can shape it the way I need to feel like we need to play the game. And he's been really good at being able to uh, get it to where I want it to look like. Number two more. I'm sure you're looking at all the position battles, but free safety, between Dion, Mosley, Boone, um, Cross, any separation, anybody there? Yeah, I mean, I think Mosley is a guy that's uh, that's done good things. He's been a little nicked up in camp. I've been pleased with Nick Cross uh, and his ability to pick things up. And he he doesn't play uh, like a freshman per se. He still has some mistakes in there, but he'll at least play fast and uh, you know make mistakes uh, doing it full speed, which which I like to see out of the position. I think Deion Jones has shown shown the consistency over there. And, you know, I've been pleased overall defensively. With our tackling, it's been a lot better uh, coming out of the spring. That was a huge concern, and we've done some things in practice to increase our ability to tackle and get the ball down, and, and especially in space. So, you know, I, I'm, the depth there has helped us. Um, I think those three are the three that have really kind of, you know, with Mosley being the guy that I think will be a, a starter for us, and you know, we'll see how the other Nick and, and, and Dion play out. Coach, since the last time you, you know, spoke to the press, those uh, those homecoming uniforms came out, and um, obviously they got you know pretty pretty uh, well played. Um, you know, just what's been your reaction to kind of seeing the larger reaction, and um, you know, what does it what does it make you feel about the, you know kind of the program and being able well, to do all that? One of the best things for us because we're in camp mode. I really don't get a chance to see or hear much reaction. It's going to bed. 12 midnight after watching tape and meetings and so I haven't been able to necessarily follow the reaction I know our team uh, we kind of showed them at the unveiling of it in a meeting to get their reaction I know they were pumped up about it you know for me again I grew up on the Terp script um, if you're a true Terp fan you, especially a Terp football fan you know what the Terp uh, script represents and so for me uh, it's, it's uh, very familiar um, Obviously, we're in this day and age where kids like that stuff and it helps in recruiting. We're very fortunate with the relationship we have with Under Armour and you know with Kevin Plank being a former football player here and the way they take care of us. And I know they're always going to have us uh, swagged out, as the players like to say. So um, anything that helps in recruiting, uh, anything that gives us an opportunity to you know go out and represent the university well, I'm all for it. What about locks and bagels? Uh, bagel and locks? Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so much news. I, I didn't know what is the bagel and locks. You hear a little breakfast. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, don't, I can't work two weeks in advance. I know I got to practice tomorrow morning at 9.30. It's okay. a morning practice. Just bring, just bring the mimosas. <laughs> yeah, no Appreciate you guys.